In this video, we'll walk through the process of setting up a morpher. I've begun by putting a simple box geometry on the screen, and you'll notice it still remains as a box. I'm going to go ahead and collapse this box into an editable poly by right-clicking inside the modifier stack and pulling down to Edit Poly. Alternatively, you could just simply right-click on the geometry, and you'll get the pop-up dialog, and from there, you can also collapse it to an editable poly. Once it's an editable poly, We'll go ahead and stretch the menu out here so we can see more of the features. We're going to gain access to our Edit Geometry tools. And if we select Polygon and then select some polygon on the side of the geometry, we can then begin to extrude, bevel, inset, outline, hinge, and so forth. Basically develop this not unlike you would a low poly model inside SketchUp. I'm going to make a few adjustments and then come back. Okay, so I manipulated the box by pushing and pulling, extruding, hinging, offsetting, and so forth to produce some geometry that looks like it might be a portable house that has a, a foot platform, a ramp, a roof monitor for kind of clear story light, and then a slide out. To set this up as a morpher, one of the things we want to do here first is uh, assign different materials to polygons such that we won't see this as just a monolithic solid but in fact we might see glass in the door, glass in the window and so forth. Now while these materials could ultimately have image maps and decals and other sorts of things we're going to just simply assign colors and colors with opacity. So I'm going to set up a multi sub object material. I'll go to the material editor and select You'll notice that my rendering engine is still set up as Mental Ray. All my color swatches here were originally set up for Mental Ray. That's why they're blacked out right now. A reminder, you can't mix and match Mental Ray lights and materials with Scanline lights and materials. You have to choose one or the other. We can just confirm that our rendering engine is going to be Scanline. For the sake of this uh, simple morpher demonstration, um, I do want to use Scanline. So I'm going to go to my render setup. And if we scroll down to where it says Assign Render, we can see that, yes, indeed, Scanline Render is going to be the rendering engine for any of the output we produce. So back to my Material Editor, I'm going to select one of the color swatches here. And if you look at the button here on the right-hand side in the middle, um, if we click on that, we can select um, a material type, and this is going to be Standard and once we've selected a standard material type you should see a kind of shaded uh, ball inside this slot and we're going to simply uh, make adjustments to colors on this but um, we want this to be a multi sub object material so we're going to take a standard material and break it up uh, into materials that would represent um, the surfaces, the glass, and maybe some other features so I'm going to set up a multi sub object material that has four colors inside of it We'll go ahead back to the standard button and click and we'll find where it says multi sub object and I'll double click on that. It'll say do you want to keep the existing material but uh, in this case since nothing's been assigned there it doesn't matter one way or another. So once we've set up a material that has four uh, color channels inside here then we'll go ahead and assign name to these. So I want to have one of these be the panels, um, one is going to be glass, and I'm also going to use this for a lattice, so um, I'm going to produce um, a slot here for the struts of my lattice and also for the joints of the lattice, the future lattice it will build. Uh, it doesn't really matter uh, in terms of the performance of this, if you name these or not, or what you name them. Uh, it, this is just a, a reference for, your, uh, for the author. Uh, the numbers that are IDs are what are essential, and these actually can be changed. You can change the number to be what you want. They don't have to be in the same order. You need to know that number one goes with whatever this particular piece of content is. So next we need to work our way down into the individual materials. The material editor acts a bit like a directory structure. So as you build up a material it can get fairly complex and uh, it branches and leads off to various features and settings. So in this particular material we basically set it up so that uh, it's the same as absorbing four materials into one spot. And so as we venture down into these things individually, now as we arrive here at the top of the first channel uh, for the panels, 
you'll see that it looks like the first level of any normal material. And what we're going to do here is simply change the color. So I'm going to click on the diffuse color swatch. I'm going to give it a, a sort of yellowish color just so we can clearly see what it is. Once we're sort of completed defining the parameters of the material, then we want to go back up to parent. Now it could very well be that we could venture deeper down inside this, uh, setting up maps and so forth. Even deep inside a single channel material, you'll need to make use of the go to parent button. So if we click on this, it takes us back up to the top of the structure where we're going to see the multi sub object material. Now before leaving, there's one other box I want to check here that's two-sided. And since these are simple, low-poly models, I want to be able to have material read on both sides of individual polygons. This is normally not the case. Um, if you have an elaborate model uh, that has wall thicknesses, you don't want both sides of every polygon reading because uh, it'll really encumber the rendering process. Okay, so back to parent. I'm going to go ahead and set that up for uh, the other three. Just quickly, we'll do the glass before I go offline for that. And um, I'll give this um, a bit of a greenish color. Most of us are all used to seeing our glass as a kind of greenish color. And then I'll make an adjustment to opacity. That's the, the one difference here. And maybe I'll just go down to about 75% um, or so. And I'll also make this two-sided and we'll go back to parent. I'll set up the other two offline and come back. Okay, so you should see my four colors inside my multi sub object material now. We can always go back in and add maps cause these to look like wood panels, metal panels, anything that would be appropriate for the subject at hand. Now I'm going to simply just take the material and drag it onto the geometry and you should notice now that uh, we see differentiation from face to face. Now the only problem being that uh, the materials that are applied don't entirely make sense for what this is. We really want to see glass in here and glass inside the door, glass inside the roof monitor. We clearly don't want to have a ramp that's made out of glass. So what I have to do now is go through this geometry and assign addresses to the polygons that correspond to the materials we want them to be represented in. I'm going to select the overall geometry and if we go to the modifier tab and look inside polygons, we can find a field here called polygon material IDs. It's usually best to assign these the greatest common denominator. If we select them all and type one in set ID and hit enter, we should see that they're all now yellow. Now what I want to do is go through and select uh, individual polygons that are different from the greatest common denominator, in this case the three glass panels, and those are all number two. I'll type number two in here and hit enter. And we should see that, you know, now we can see through into this. You will notice, because this is just a surface model and there's no dimension inside here, we can see all the way down inside that uh, kind of ballast tank um, foot that's on the base of this. Okay, so further detailing might be necessary, uh, but as a first pass in terms of explaining Morpher, this model will be fine for us for now. A couple of other color changes and then we'll move into setting up the, the Morpher. Okay, so there's enough differentiation on this model that um, we can distinguish uh, some of the elements of, of the project. And next what I'm going to do is produce a series of copies of this, one to correspond with each individual item that will be morphed out or deployed from the geometry. So uh, one will be the ramp coming down, the other will be the ramp deck, uh, we'll have the roof monitor, that's three, and we'll have the slide out here that's four, and potentially this ballast foot. Um, that supports the box um, might be a fifth. So I'll make five copies of this and then we'll proceed. Okay, so now you see there are five copies of the geometry. It's critical that all possible deployments that would come out of this morph exist in an original or a host. And then what we'll do is systematically retract one element in each of these that corresponds to the uh, final outcome that we want to see animated. So in the first piece here, let's start with something simple. I'll simply slide the box back in. Now let's rotate around to the opposite side. Okay, so I've moved to the opposite side and we'll select the polygon here um, on the slide out. And I'm going to use the move tool and we'll simply slide this back into place. 
Now it's essential that we don't lose the polygons here, the four polygons that wrap around the edge. So we want to slide this in just enough so that it's not really discernible to the eye uh, without losing the, the geometries that comprise the slide out. Okay, so I'm going to go through and uh, let's go ahead and let go of this. We'll go through and make adjustments to uh, the subsequent geometry here. And this one, it'll simply be the, the roof monitor. And this, a thing like this has to be uh, done a little bit more carefully because you see I need to pull all of this down in here without losing this polygon, this polygon, this polygon, or the glass polygon. So um, there'll probably be a few stages involved in, in moving this particular piece down. I think I would choose to use the, um, the edge topological feature and I would gather up all the edges uh, here for the top of the glass, the top of the roof, and the bottom of the glass, and then um, I would move these down into place uh, until I made uh, this somewhat disappear uh, without losing the polygon. So if you look at the final outcome to the five geometries here that were copied from the original, uh, each one has one item that's been retracted and uh, first the slide out here if you can squint your eyes and look very carefully you'll notice that the the four polygons still exist likewise the roof monitor clear story um, has pulled back down on the subsequent one then the two stages to the ramp the ramp proper slides in and as we zoomed in here we'd see the polygons that comprise the ramp that slides out are right inside this area and then the slide out deck, um, the, the porch, if you will, that goes into the door, that's a second stage. And for that to slide in, what we do is slide the whole piece together. And so here we have a very, very, very slender version of both porch deck and the ramp that leads up. This morpher would just handle a sliding in and out. So it would have to be a two-step thing. You would retract the ramp and then slide in the deck. And then the last piece here is the retraction of the, the foot that's beneath. Each of the items here has been set up. And now what we want to do is on our host geometry, we're going to apply the Morpher modifier. And I'll pull down to where I find Morpher. And it'll open up a whole series of channels. And we could click on the button that says Load Multiple Targets. Alternatively, you could just simply pick some item from the scene so we could pick them one at a time and they would fill these slots or we could manipulate something and then capture how the geometry is at that moment and save it as a state and manipulate it further and then capture that as a state and in a sense kind of um, manually manipulate the geometry to produce all of the key frames of the morph. Now it's also very important that each of the items as they go into the morph um, should be named so that when you look at the morph stack uh, you know exactly what you're manipulating. So I'm going to go offline here and quickly uh, assign names to each of these. So when I click on load multiple targets I can find all of the items that I want to have deployed in my morpher, my pop out, my roof monitor, my ramp, the porch, and the foot. And when I load them all, you'll see that uh, they show up inside this list. If we rotate so we can see these all working, then you'll notice as I make adjustments here, we can see the pop out slides in and out. We can see the roof monitor opens. We can see the ramp retract and the porch slide in. And we can see the foot retract. Initially this might show up at the site looking like this and then the foot is deployed and then the uh, porch is deployed and the ramp is deployed and the roof monitor is popped up and the pop-out finally slides out. One last thing all of the supporting geometries, the pop-out, the roof monitor, etc., they must remain in the file. You can't toss them out. They aren't embedded inside this. They're referenced to produce the morph. You can simply hide them. And since they're named, it'll be easy to recall them if we need to make adjustments. And that's it. So there's a simple morph.